Tonight's episode of the ITL Podcast is dedicated to the life of the legend, the king, the artist, the philanthropist, and the brilliant business mind of Nipsey Hussle. From Dayton, Ohio, all the way to Compton, California, from Cambridge, Carundel, and Waymire, to Crenshaw and Slauson, we love you, bro. Rest in peace. That's why I call my thing the marathon, because yeah. I, I'm not going to lie and, and, and portray um, this ultimate poise. Like, I've been, had it figured out. No, nah, I just didn't quit. That's the only distinguishing quality from me and probably whoever else going through this or mm-hmm. went through this or is going to go through this is that I ain't quit. I went through every emotion. I went through mm. every emotion with trying to pursue what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Mm. And I think that what what going to separate whoever is going to try to go for something is that you ain't going to quit. Unless, you know, you're going to really take the stance if I'm going to die behind what I'm, what I'm getting at right now. La, picture me rolling, tip of my chauffeur, niggas look jealous, you gotta control it, reaching my quota, mixing my soda, feeling connected to God, trying to get closer, stepping on roaches, me and my loasters, just trying to get over, trying not to get swallowed by locusts, trying to stay focused, kind of like Moses, like somebody chose us, sweat on my shoulder, I feel these emotions. I'm gonna let this play a little longer than usual. I'm feeling heroic, but life is a dice game, and they dare you to blow it. You might get a strike, man, but that ain't gonna pay for the strollers. It's never enough to kiss solar. Tell her your daddy your soldier. She needs you right now in this moment. I want Nip to get all his respect. All his love. Shout out to the Slauson boy. As always, welcome back to the ITL Podcast. I go by the name Johnny Will. This is Nate Swan, Nate. Cartier King cashing in. And we thank y'all so much for tuning in. Man, I'll be I'll be honest. This this week, this episode is a is a little different. Um as we were coming up with topics throughout the week, as we do every week, of uh, things to top, talk about. This was one of the topics that I kind of wanted to avoid, but I, I felt like it would be only right if we chime in and say something. Um, there, normally when when celebrities die, you know, it, it don't hit me the way this one hit me. But I, I got to admit, this one was rough. This was not the news I expect to come home to on a, on a Sunday evening after spending my entire afternoon out with children for flag football and to come home and to, to see this news. And I'm not even going to lie. I've, I've woken up every day this week still emotional about it because there's something, there's a, a new clip of somebody speaking about Nipsey Hussle that I see every morning, um, most recently Baron Davis. And when I, when I see Darren, Baron Davis speak, when I see other people that have personal stories and personal pictures with Nipsey, then it makes me emotional all over again just because this shouldn't have ended this way for for this individual. Um, you know, Meech used to make fun of me because he said I was West Coast because when you ride with me, I'm listening to Nipsey Hussle. And, and, and it was, you know, I enjoyed the music, of course, but it was more so about the individual. It's about the person. And I even think about the first time I even was introduced to Nipsey's music and he was just a, a feature artist on, on a song with Drake. And Nipsey's last line was, when you're on the grind, your worst en- enemy is idle time. And I felt that as a, as a college student trying to be on my grind and trying to, to succeed in this world. And it in those ty- and that type of energy that he puts out uh, or put out um, is what made me become the super fan that I am of Nipsey Hussle. Never met him, never been nowhere near Cali. But that type of energy, that's why it hurts a lot more because it shouldn't have ended this way for for this person. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, like I, I initially when I heard of Nipsey, it was always he was Lauren London's dude or whatever. Uh, so I really didn't get hip to his music until the victory like dropped. 
Like mm-hmm. that's the first mm-hmm. time with me coming across Nipsey, and I instantly became a fan of his. Uh, and then you know finding out more about him, his story, and, and what he was you know attempting or what he was doing, not attempting, he was doing it. You know, and that's the thing. Like it was, it wasn't just talk. Right. It yeah. was a lot of action behind yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're talking about reinvesting in, in the hood, reinvesting in the block where he grew up in. Uh, you know, he created like a STEM research center for kids. He uh, was, you know, rebuilding playgrounds to be safe havens, you know, so kids could have a safe area to play and they have to worry about gang violence. He was doing a lot in this community. He's doing everything that the people that's still in the hood eggs for our celebrities and our entertainers to do. He was doing that, and he was just a, you know, obviously a, a loving, you know, husband, father. Um, like, you know, when, in, in hip-hop, showcasing your lady is not something that yeah, hip-hop artists do. Right. But to to be always with him, to be in the hood with him, yeah. to be on red carpet with him. Spoke to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It was, all, even, it was always the ultimate respect. Yeah, yeah. so loving father, obviously a businessman, uh, philanthropist, like you said. Um, just a man of, of the community, man. And, and it's... Like, I'm going to say this. Like, we was around, we was kids when Pac and Big died. And and back then, we didn't understand the impact of it. Yeah, they, at eight years at old, all, that like, was 96. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we knew they died, but we didn't understand the impact. I mean, and then, and then we had other legends like Michael Jackson and Prince who went, you know, passed away or whatever. And it's like, even when they, even when they passed away, You'll say they live their life. They, you know what I'm saying? Not only did they yeah. live their life, but I, I feel they just weren't as connected to the culture. Yeah. yeah like, okay, Nipsey yeah. was a guy that was connected to the culture. Like, although we not from Cali, we never been in Cali, like, the people there could go – they could see Nipsey. They could, you know, walk up, touch When him, you go to the marathon store them, you know what I mean? and ring out, you yeah. will see, you know what I'm saying, Nipsey. Yeah, Nipsey you see Black somewhere. Sam. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I mean, I can understand the impact, like, going through this Nipsey hustle – like him dying, I could understand the impact of Pac and Big, and, and like I, this is the first time I really felt like somewhat emotional mm-hmm. about a celebrity yeah. dying, like a, a person I didn't know. Yeah, I mean, like I said, every day this week it's still been like an emotional feeling because you you look at what you lost, you look at what was cut short, and and Dio Hughley he said. Look at all he was doing at the age of thirty three. Just imagine if he would have made it to forty three. Right. And we'll never get to see that. Ever. 53, anything. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, by the time people be 50, you know, they be with their kids, wife, you know, out of, like, the limelight. But at that point in time, man, they could have had so much money and just, you know, obviously money helps create change due to the fact that you can pretty much throw it at things to improve, you know, things and make STEM schools like Nate was saying. So, um, just imagine how much more things he could have changed in those twenty years, and he would only be fifty three. Like fifty three is not it's, it's not old. It's not you know? old at all. Yeah, you know. So, uh, I mean, his his I feel like his his lyric that stuck out to me just every time I listen to Nipsey and I think about Nipsey, it was, you know, I ain't like these other fucking rap niggas. You know what I'm saying? It's like for real. You know, like. Is it because it's a lot of action behind the, the, the talk? It's a whole yeah. lot, you know. Yeah. what I'm saying I, I felt that when he said that, I was like, "Damn, you know, it's gangster ass line, but but it meant so much, you know." And uh, like I, I didn't I didn't really get into Nipsey until like Nate did, as far as like Victory Lap and uh, when you put me on to him, you know what I mean. So, and see, I'm not one of these you know new Nip, Nipsey fans to where when people say I didn't get onto him till Victory Lap. That's okay. That's great. I, even if you get on to him now, that's great. Like, get hip to him now because his interviews are still out there. You can still go out there and think of, and watch the brilliance of his business mind to put out a mixtape for free and also sell it for a hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? And that hundred dollar mixtape funded his 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 record label. You know what I'm saying? The slogan of the marathon of it ain't gonna be a sprint. We still gonna get it done. All money in, stacking up, investing. You know, jewelry is cool, but I'm investing in the community. And he said that as a teenager in an interview, yeah. and at 33, not only did he open up a had, store, uh, he, he 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 purchased the entire block. Curly yeah. fro, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? Purchased and 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 to see him hire somebody that was just cleaning up the shop. He said, "I'm gonna hire you. You clean up the you clean up the block for me." And not only that, hop into Maybach with us, and we are gonna go to the barber shop. We gonna get you together. Like 
those type of opportunities and you know and when we're not on the mic we have a lot of conversations about you know investing to the black community nate is really big on wanting to invest in the black community so when things like this happen it's sad that the conversation that you see out there now is is it is it even worth it yeah you know and that, and that hurts me That's to scary, now bro. you have the people who have the financial means to do it to kind of second guess their mortality or second guess whether they even want to take that step because of the end result. And, and, and to, to continue, uh, continue what you just touched on, I, I think it was Charlemagne just the other day where he basically said black people can be our own worst enemy at times, man. Like, you know, we, we always want to point fingers to, to, to the system, to the man. But at the end of the day, man, when, when you have someone like Nipsey, and, and he, he's not the only entertainer or athlete that's right. reinvesting in the community, yeah. but he's one of them. He, he's a pillar, you know, uh, of the you know Compton community, and for him to die to senseless violence, yeah. man, over like, over the male ego, yeah, uh, over exactly like that shit really like is fucked up, and 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 I like I really felt that shit, yeah. bro. And, Especially because you with Nipsey, you feel like it's attainable. Yeah. You know, you see the Jay Z's and you see the Lebrons, and you're like, okay, those are people and that you'll never get bro, to. But you see a Nipsey, you be like, I can do that. But yeah, <laughs> I, I I see a Nipsey, and I think I can do that. But then I try to think of like if I was in Nipsey's shoes, he never got the chance to be Jay Z. Exactly. Yeah. That's never true. got the that's chance true. to really take off like Lebron, and and like just the way he was moving, it seemed like he was just about he to was take that off, way. Bro. Yeah. That's fucked up, man. And and it ain't even about nothing, though. Nothing, <laughs> It man. ain't about nothing. nothing. It wasn't even about nothing. It was even, like, even if you think of the code of the streets, it was even, yo, I'm not even going to harm you, you know, but because the, the story was he told the guy, like, I don't want you around me because you were a snitch. You, we found out you was an informant. So if you think of the code of the streets, if you find out somebody a snitch, bad things happen. It wasn't even like he wasn't even going to inflict violence on that individual. Right. It was just yo, I don't want you around me right now because of what the rumor is about you, and for you to then come back the way you are and respond like that, it's like, bro, I, like I literally was like, damn, they took my dog, they took my dog from me, bro, because there's certain rappers that when they do an interview, I, I tune in and listen to them speak. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. J Cole, Nipsey, Hov. Even Wale, hell, even Nick Cannon, if you want to call him a rapper, like those type of people who think the way they think, I tune in every time. Nick Cannon is such a like wishy washy situation for me, only because like he he definitely says a lot of good things and he can put together some good sentences via Instagram, but his whole personality and the way he carries himself is just so lame that it's so hard to take him serious. Well, which I'll be kind honest, of fucked up. It's on my not side. even for me to listen to people I agree with. So I tune in Nick Cannon because of his thought process. I may not even agree with a word he says, but I just like to see how he comes to the conclusion he comes to. So that way I, I can probably be like, all right, let me think about something in a different way that I'm not thinking of type of thing. That, that's why I tune in to certain people like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's just like, man, when you just see him rocking, whatever he rocking, that turban and all <laughs> I don't that other crazy shit. Turban, man. Now, I know you don't care about it, but, bro, it's just hard to take somebody serious that's, like, so goofy and not funny and his job is to be funny on this show. I don't think he wears it to be goofy, though. No, like, I, I feel like it has, a, like, a real meaning to him. It really does. It, no, it, it does <laughs> yeah. have a real meaning to him, and you can, you know, you can find videos on YouTube where he speaks towards that. Uh, but but since you bought, bought Nick Cannon up, you know, he is going to continue uh, the Dr. CB yeah. uh, documentary. And for all those, cons you know, conspiracy theorists who believe, you know, this was an act of the government, well, don't. What what I'm gonna say is don't don't allow Nipsey to die in vain. Yeah, like all the yeah. Doctor Sibby uh, videos, his work is out there. Do your Googles, you know, research. If you if you think Nipsey that he went out because of that, I think it's your job to to read up on Doctor Sibby and, and and what Nipsey wanted to touch and highlight by doing that documentary. But it's not even just about Sibby. It's more so about don't let him die in vain by not. If you live in that Crenshaw community, like, and you were doing good things for it, don't don't quit now. Yeah, true. Nipsey gone, yeah, true. you know what I'm saying? Um, so if Nipsey was supposed to meet with the police chief about stopping gang violence, you know, whoever was number two, you need to step up and yeah, do that. You right. know what I mean? Like, don't Facts. quit just because he's gone. Don't don't think that you know your purpose is is over. So uh, kind of like Nick Cannon was saying in his Instagram post. Your work is my work now, and we got to keep pushing because it's a marathon. Absolutely. And to the conspiracy theorists out there, like, 
I'm not even mad at them because I understand when situations like this happen, you just try to make sense of it in your brain and you just can't you just can't accept that it was over nothing. So you're like, it's got to be something bigger than this. So let me come up with a reason that I can at least understand and cope with. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, understand it's it. like to just wait to, <laughs> to how, to, how do we get here? How do we get here? You know, it had to be some overall crazy th- reason why somebody wanted somebody this positive in a community gone you know and you know i mean not necessarily to feed the conspiracy theorists but say i mean you hear rappers all the time say i i put a price in your head and have one of your niggas do it you know what i'm saying who's to say that if that was the conspiracy was true that the government didn't do that you know what i mean all i had to do is find one person that lightweight didn't fuck with him you know but was still close enough to where he can get close enough we all seen the video and be like you know, you gotta, you gotta chop it up, and Nipsey kind of not paying his ass no attention, and blah, blah, blah. And the next thing you know, it's like this nigga shooting at me. So you know, yeah, just a a very sad, sad situation, yeah. and very unfortunate. Sure. Um, our our thoughts and prayers are with his family, and, and definitely with Lauren London. Um, I know it's heartbreaking, especially heartbreaking for her and and, and uh, his brother Black Sam and his whole all money and crew, man. So Nipsey, this 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 episode is definitely for you. Small circle, it's a chosen few. I wrote it down and I followed through. I bought a pound and we rode the fuel. I talk shit, but she know it's true. Ocean views, small circle, it's a chosen few. I wrote it down and I followed through. I bought a pound and we rode the fuel. I had to do something to pick our spirits back up, man. It's, like I said, this is a, a rougher episode than, than normal. Episode 101, I'm back with the fellas. That, tell me about that new Jack Swing music. <laughs> 101, 101, 101. Is this one of the reasons why they called uh, Bruno Mars a cultural appropriator? Because yeah. they, they said he stole Tony, man. Tony, 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 whole swag. Yeah, fuck that. Hey, <laughs> Bruno. Why? Why fuck Bruno? Nah, not fuck. Bruno. I thought you said fuck, fuck that and him. Fuck the people hating on. Him. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said, episode one hundred and one. Uh, back with the, with the guys on the way to a to a thousand next time. Or should should, <laughs> should we do uh, two hundred? Uh, Set the bar two hundred. Yeah, Let's bar. get to two hundred. I mean, we just do a hundred at a time. Then we get to that band. Then we get to the music. So this means nationwide ready to break up. Nah, you talking about? Let's just take it to a to, to uh, a hundred. Let's make realistic goals. So question. No, a thousand I've always is seen. Like, 20 years how many weeks is that <laughs> <laughs> so, you know i've seen that uh they said that uh so instead about, of i ain't gonna lie it's about three years bro. a little less than three is it what to a thousand shows yeah if we're recording every night yeah fuck yeah it. we do it's 52 <laughs> what 52 weeks yeah eh, no so i've seen uh nationwide this may be right up your alley that like for marriage, they saying that uh, you may not have to marry for for life anymore. You could just marry and renew every four years, like a driver's license. That's funny. <laughs> you with that? That's wild. <laughs> nah, I ain't with that though. Like, so well, what if after the four years you you don't want to renew? Nah, I ain't with that. Like, cause when I finally do plan to uh, marry, that's the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. And if it don't work, that's my one and only marriage. But but what if she don't want to renew? Then hell. <laughs> you get divorced, and then whoever I meet after that is just gonna be a life partner. So wait, just because the first one didn't go right, you're not married again? I'm not marrying again. Why? I'm just not. I'm only doing it. What once. if you just made a bad decision? I'm only doing it once, bro. Whoever you make I, bad decisions. Whoever I meet after that is a life partner. That's like saying. That's like saying. Um, I was. Uh, I I was driving around wasted, and I got a DUI. And now I ain't gonna drive no more. So you saying one bad so, choice? No bad choice don't determine you. You gonna keep driving. You ain't gonna start calling ride share. Why marry again? Because you you starting over and when, with the new person, you giving them that opportunity. What if they never been married? You know what I'm saying? You can't deny them that just because you had a bad situation prior to. So it's kind of like you know. I just feel like you can't take that away from them. You got to give them that equal opportunity for that happiness too. I, I guess it, it for me it probably me. it probably would depend on how smooth the divorce go to. Like if I fucking lose my house, half of my bank account, lose cars, I'm not doing that shit again. 
Fuck that. But that ain't your house, though. That was y'all's house. Or our house. That was y'all's <laughs> house. Whatever, whatever. But if I'm if I'm on a losing end of all that shit, as most men are typically, if, especially if they're the breadwinner, I'm not doing that shit. So that just time. mean for your next so marriage, for next you better make sure that up. you come up. Like you, it's like you can't. You gonna go down 01 and not try to re up? No. Like you, you can't be down 01. The next divorce, you gotta win. Then you double you one one. You get your third marriage, and then that's your opportunity to nah, go up to one. Nah, I'm good. Take this serious. Life partners. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you gonna hey, sure, you gonna on, quit, bro. bro? Don't, don't that's uh, not fair, man. Life partner. That's not fair, man. That shit work for Oprah. You not hey first I'll be if you become a billionaire, <laughs> <laughs> I'm moving in. I'll be your life. No, I'm kidding. But LP. <laughs> it it you can't bring over in this. Why not? Because you ain't Stedman. <laughs> <laughs> you think Stedman get other hoes? Nah, if he's smart, he ain't. Like, so you think he ain't Jordan Woods with it? Like he ain't about to ruin his billions? Man, he better not. He'd be stupid. But you think Oprah care though? As long as she said she probably like just don't be messy with it. Nah, I think Oprah care. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, no, but you know what's weird is like people take their relationship as like they not even really together. They just kinda like talk. Like, what if they've been tearing that ass up? <laughs> <laughs> what, tearing up Oprah? I mean, they like partner games, he probably is. I mean, but you know, like, like but you know, if, if it was his wife, you would you would you would think of their relationship on a whole nother level, like like normal marriage. You know, like they they pretty the, much earned a relationship. Now people look at him as like they're just friends and he just happened to be a dude. He probably having more sex. Now? Yeah, since he's not married. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Do, you, would, do you think he had a confidence? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was a joke. Somebody sleeping on the couch <laughs> tonight. It's a joke. <laughs> Hit him with the <laughs> Do you think do you think he had a confidence to knock down a, a billionaire's ass? Who me? Yeah. Boy, I'd be in there acting a fool. Like it's a lot of pressure cuz like you get one shot to this like to determine whether you get to double back and do it again and you get some of the money. I ain't Joe Button in that ass. <laughs> <laughs> you get one shot, Nate. You Yeah, I'm good. You succeed in tear yeah, down I'm a billionaire's ass. So do, sure. are you getting some are you moving in like Dave Chappelle? Yeah, give me the West Wing. <laughs> Shit. Hey, Oprah, honey. <laughs> yeah, we ain't even got to see each other. All you the do time. everything. Only you when, can, whenever man. you want to call me, then I, I'm coming running. On, okay, okay. You you there for hire then? Right. <laughs> you such a bird, bro. <laughs> Fucking bird. Super bird. But the crazy <laughs> thing is that he he won't get married the second time. I'm a bird with him though. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. You you won't get married the second time, but you probably because on the West Wing he can play his. PlayStation 6 bro, And not to worry about it Bro I'm in the West Wing I win We gotta cross paths Do yeah. all the fucking Oxycontin C1 And everything else Right bro Adderall This motherfucker Be up all night Playing the game So uh, I don't know if y'all Seen this uh, Gucci has been Back in the news Of them trying to Improve their I guess Customer service I guess you would call it Or Appear to Explore better diversity I thought and you were Talking about Gucci man Nah Gucci the clothing line. So they have uh they've announced a five million dollar community fund that goes uh to charities across the country that uplift people of color. Um that it also includes a twenty thousand dollar scholarship program led by Dapper Dam <laughs> Dapper Dam. Dapper Dan and Will I Am uh that will help diversity in fashion. And then all Gucci employees are required um to spend four days off and of those four days they have to do mandatory volunteering now when you boycott you want to see change is this the change that you think people want to see that will make people okay with gucci again because that they have action um i guess behind what the boycott has done but i think in today's cancel culture it's like nope i don't accept your apology what was the it, first amount of money that they donated no, this is a, a five million dollar campaign. So all of the twenty k and all that stuff was in, within the campaign. Right. I'm saying, what was the first large amount? What do you mean? I have no idea. What are you talking about? Yeah, but the five million. Five million. Yeah, it's a five million dollar uh, campaign community fund that goes across charities across the country, and then within that, within so, the campaign, so you saying like campaign, like they're raising the money. No, 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 no. Meaning, like, I'm not just about to hand this one place $5 million. Yeah. I'm going to say, here's $5 million towards diversity. This is the different things we're going to do with our $5 million towards diversity. Right. So, I mean, yeah, they're, yeah. they're pretty much, they're still giving it away to whoever. 
Like okay. they're, they're dispersing it evenly. Yeah. Okay. Is that what you're saying? I'm just basically yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. So, you know, um, people can sit here and say that's not what the what they wanted, but it's like Finney didn't do that, you know what I'm saying? Or whoever else then offended people, you know what I'm saying? Um, with the noose. I can't remember what brand that was. But uh Was so, that Gucci with the noose? Nah, it wasn't Gucci with the Or was that else. Burberry? Nah, what Burberry? That's Burberry the, did have something to work. That was Burberry because that was the baby was, shower clothes. Yeah, they said, yeah, the baby shower. They said, all you dudes, y'all going to have to find a new baby shower outfit. So, um, you ever heard of a baby sprinkle? No. Nah. What's that when they uh, don't know if it's theirs or not? I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but one of Jazz, one of jazz friends is supposed to go to a baby sprinkle. Oh, shit. And okay. I, I ain't even yeah. ask, like, what the fuck is that? Oh, they, I just kind of roll with it, like, you know, kid? it's a light it's a light thing of a shower. Yeah, they said they unsure. It probably, the, like, I think it might have been the second kid. That makes sense. Are they, like, they not sure if they're keeping it or, like? I don't know. They was okay. like, man, bring just a few gifts. Okay. Don't bring full fledged. And we're not going to buy enough food for all y'all. Y'all just got to get here early. And if you get here, you get some meatballs. Like, don't lace this motherfucker up. It's just a sprinkle. But, anyways, in your opinion, do you think this is enough um, effort towards Gucci that could bring people around and be like, okay, they're showing the action that we wanted? I ain't going to say that it's enough right now. I just think that it is action. Therefore, we can evaluate it after it starts. Moving and we start to see it. And then if shit's like not going towards the impact or anything like that, then yeah, then at that point, I think we can decide. Uh, it's, I guess, to save face if they feel they needed to do that. that. I mean, that's the way I look at it. But see, I think a lot of people feel that way that you're just saying that it's a safe face. I'm uh, all right. So again, I'm just asking questions. I'm not caping for Gucci. Uh, I'm just asking questions. So my question is. If you think this is just saving face, what is it? What type of action did you want to see from them that'll be like, okay, now they're they're showing and proving, they're um, putting action behind what we want. I, I I don't think it's any specific like action in, in terms of donating money or shit like that. Uh, that I, I I would need to see. What what I need to see is just a change in culture, like within their organization. So that meaning hiring more black people putting black people in positions of leadership, making sure no shit like that ever happens again. So, like, for me, I need to see, like, that action over time, not just you know, writing a check just to shut people up. Like, And I feel like maybe... Okay, so like, you want you want to see, like, okay, here's our meeting for our next uh, campaign, our next clothing line, and you see some black faces at the table. Yeah, yeah. I, I Definitely, it should be some black faces in a boardroom. That's the easy so, way so, to... So you're changing your culture. Just cutting a check doesn't mean you're changing the culture, in my opinion. That's the easy way to, like... Get people on your side without spending a lot of money. Like, because if you just post an Instagram pic, you know how people, you know how many times people think life is Instagram. So they ain't even got to hire them. They could just post some black people sitting in a room (laughs) and then, and then people would be like, yes, Gucci. Yes. But the thing is, they can hire them as actors, pay them as a one time fee. And they don't got to hire them. NDAs or whatever. Yeah. I ain't trying to uh, give people a way to be underhand racist but i'm just saying like <laughs> <laughs> what you're saying it just took me to that place but right. yeah that that is a uh like a good example of like okay the money's cool but we still ain't got no say so in the design right and the design and just the the direction of, of the overall company we're not getting any opportunities and hell if you want to keep all the way 100 the, what made your brand like hot was rappers like, I mean, obviously, the people, white people with money, they've always been worn Gucci, but it, it wasn't, like, huge, like, far as in terms of fashion until rappers got Like, like Hennessy. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, it, it, it's like, we should be in the boardrooms. We should be making decisions. And so, I would rather see opportunities. I would rather see the culture of the company change versus them just cutting the check. So, how how what are the steps in that, though? Like, do you think if Gucci... I mean, Diaper Dan, hiring him, you know. <laughs> Dapper. Dapper, diaper, diaper. <laughs> fucking diaper, diaper, diaper. Dan, uh, how many people would see a a Gucci job posting though? I, I mean, probably. I mean, I'm, I'm the, sure the people who's in the industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, if you're in the fashion right. world, you probably see it. Yeah. So you know, hiring him, uh, we, we see is Louis Vuitton with Virgil. So it's just, I mean, obviously giving people opportunities, giving designers opportunities. See, the thing with with fashion that I've always been curious about, Gucci still puts their name on shit, but. At what point do you think you get so much brand loyalty 
from customers that you don't even have to put your emblem on the item. At because, all? Yeah, because like if you think about it, uh, Ralph Lauren, they're just the horse, but they also have products, which is their high end products that don't have their logo. They don't have it on the shirt. If you think about the bullshit like South Pole, it was plastered on everything. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it was on everything. So, like, with with that type of shit, what, at what point do you think like motherfuckers is like I ain't putting the logo on, they still gonna buy it? I mean, <laughs> black folk, you not gonna, you not it's it's hard to sell something with, without the logo on it. You know what I mean? Um, it's just really like, is it though? To an extent, it just depends on I mean, what it is. Like you know? today, I think people just like. The, how it looks They don't care What the fucking logo got to I, say. I, But the thing about it Is that like What do you mean How it looks Kind of like 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 the, the design Of the of the shirt Like I think One of the things uh, That was in last year Last spring Was the, the neck The collar on the t-shirt Hung a little lower It was cut a little lower Than the normal crew neck I think that was in and nobody cared Like what the logo was On that crew neck That was a little cut A little lower yeah. It was the design but That's just like Street That's like Pack Sun yeah, Like yeah. basic shit <clears throat> like it, when you start talking about like expensive name brand type of stuff, clothing, um, that, and and that's why the reason why I ask, are we selling in black folk? Like, what's the target? Because black people, I think we are label hungry. So still, yes. Like I mean, for as far as the people that buy Gucci, buy uh, Louis, and some of these other like brand name clothing, you're not gonna go drop five hundred to a thousand dollars on any type of clothing if it ain't got Gucci plaster on that motherfucker so people know you can afford or you buy Gucci. Like you're not just gonna go buy a Gucci T shirt that ain't got no logo on it at all. And speaking of Gucci, um with Floyd Mayweather, I was listening to an interview today and it was the Breakfast Club was interviewing one of the top bloggers and he was speaking on Floyd Mayweather who was still supporting Gucci. And he was saying that although Floyd doesn't speak on all of the community work that he does he does do a lot of investing in black businesses. He just doesn't promote it. Does that give Floyd a pass for his actions with I'm going into Gucci regardless of what everybody is, is is asking him to boycott because he doesn't broadcast his work in the community. But this blogger was like, yo, he does a lot of stuff. He just doesn't tell people. So I don't care if Floyd, he said, I don't care what Floyd wears because of the work he actually does in the community. Would I mean? Would wow. you? Yeah. Would that, Would you give somebody a pass? I mean, I'm not gonna say he's lying, but I, I would love to see some of the work he's doing in the community. And I, I know it's a lot of people that don't want to speak on that, uh, uh, what they're doing in the community because you know a lot of people you know are doing it from the like just the goodness of their heart or whatever. But Floyd, as, as much as he can put out, he doesn't seem like that type of person. Like. He's from Michigan. We see the whole Flint situation. As far as we know, he hasn't been back to Flint to try to help. You know, yeah, it's like the, your public energy you put out there right, doesn't yeah. speak to you being a and, philanthropist. Right, that's a hard and, and, work. Right, and it's like if that's what he was doing, you would think he would at least want to shed a little light on it because that that would draw so much more support for him and his cause and, and what he stand for if he was doing that. So I mean, I'm not going to necessarily say it gives him a pass. I'm t- what we'll give him a pass for me is all black people can't get on one accord. So some people say fuck Gucci, other people like I still buy Gucci. I'm still rocking my Gucci. Like so, I don't know, man. Black people. Just I mean, but it. we just can't necessarily get upset at black people because we all can't get on the same accord. Like, imagine if all the white people decided we need to agree on one thing, and like it's so many of the motherfuckers, and it would never happen. You know what I'm saying? So I get what you're saying in general that like black people in a, as a small group can't agree on something. But I think that uh, being open listeners and communicators, I think that we can if we are, you know, in smaller groups of people. And, uh, I mean, I got faith in us, but, you know, I, I love black people and hate niggas, so we're going to see. And, it's, and, it's a, and I'll say, we don't necessarily have to be on the same accord, though, because, like, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King was not on the same accord. They wasn't. The the Black Panthers and Martin Luther King did not like each other, but shit still got accomplished. Well, I, I don't necessarily mean. We but it's a, it's, it's a social media it, world, so we want to see people, and I get that. Like that's like, very important. And, and I don't necessarily mean we need to be on the same accord, especially we don't, and we don't have to be on the same accord all the time. 
even with the Malcolm and Martin uh, example, like they both were fighting for the same thing, although yeah. they saw two different methods yeah, to yeah, accomplish that's true, it. That's true. So, like with the Gucci, I'm, I'm not saying we all need to always agree or think the same, but at some point we have to be able to stand for something as, as a as a community. So if especially we when that's outright is like blatant. Yeah, you know I mean, so it's like one. if we're never going to come together and stand for something, then it's like, why are we complaining? As they the said, man, if you if you're not first, you're last. <laughs> now nationwide, speak for the uh, the the black male community. No, speak for the male community all together. Uh, with so, Cardi B, did you hear about that situation? I heard about it. So Cardi B, um, she, this was an IG live video from three years ago that resurfaced of her saying while she was a a, a, a sex worker, um, in that lifestyle, she drugged and raped. Not drugged and raped. Sorry, let me not put that out there. Yeah. She drugged and <laughs> robbed. She drugged and robbed men who yeah. would pay her. Um, so nationwide. It doesn't seem to be the same type of backlash as of there was. Of course, ain't gonna be no backlash. Why? Because the females she's a for woman. It. She yes, it, it, it's like it's a double standard for men. Like when it comes to like just being able to sleep around and and get that from other other dudes, and if, but, uh, if a female does it, it she's a hoe. Are but you it's putting, also a double standard for women as well so would, are you putting drugged and robbed on the same as drugged and raped it's drugged like, it's I'm, still I'm, a crime I'm, I'm not gonna say sure. rape and, and rape rape is de- or you no know, rape is on a whole different level than in, than theft yeah, robbery yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so but the fact that you, you're drugging them and you're still committing a crime I'm never gonna compare you know what Bill Cosby or Art Kelly allegedly did to Cardi B robbing somebody but at the end of the day, she still committed a fucking crime if she did what she said. So she should be fucking in jail. Someone no, come forward. No. Here's here here's why I took this story a little bit differently. It's because when people hear drugged now, it's a trigger. So when you hear drugged, you think about I met her on a date, she drugged me and robbed me. I, you know, met her as a normal citizen, she drugged me and robbed me. How she met these men was illegal by nature in the first place i am paying you for sex i'm soliciting prostitution so i'm paying you for a night out so i am already committing a legal act so you think i'm gonna go to the cops how i'm gonna explain how I you mean, well, yeah, obviously they <laughs> you can't go to the cops, so. so so it's like you when you already in the underworld you already yeah. in the illegal world but that, once that you, doesn't one, give her a pass it don't give her yeah. a pass but once you engage in that type of that that life then you take will come with it and that's why I looked at it differently. It was because it's like with Bill, his allegations were just normal women who were just interested in him, and he was dating, and he did that. And it's rape; it's different. Well, but with 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 Cardi, it was already the underworld. You were already in the illegal underworld, especially when it comes to the double standard, like you said, of guys can say, "Oh, when I was in the streets, I robbed them, I shake him down, blah blah blah," and we and we give them street cred for it. Do we not? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 all that's yeah, true. Yeah. It's all true. Uh, but, I mean, I I don't know, man. I, th- I think it's the difference between when you're doing it on wax. Is every, like on wax, everybody like exaggerate and talk about shit that ain't, they ain't never did. Versus what about Sh- Soldier Boy's Vlad like, interview? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> versus, versus you going on like IG Live or whatever platform she did it on three years ago or however long ago it was. So I, th- I think it's a difference. But but even like I guess when that clip became like revealed or you know dug back up, I guess she made another comment to basically where it's like, ladies, if your man don't cheat on them, don't cheat back or some shit. Basically, drug them and, and then bring a transsexual in and have the trans. Bruh, I didn't see that one. Like, I follow. Basically, it's like like drug your dude or blindfold, whatever, and then get a transsexual, make him have sex with a transsexual, which is like, that's some complete. I'm trying to figure out, like, what's that bullshit. supposed to solve? Basically, you make your dude. He, he's gay now. I okay. Guess. Oh. <laughs> like, like, damn, that's the so, payback? So, like, so that's the, like, yeah, that's their way of getting payback. So I, I think, I thought that was bullshit because, in my opinion, if she did that, then that's rape. Yeah, hell yeah, that's that's right. You know I mean? So I mean, she deserved to be on SVU if that shit's real, man. I mean, like you just can't do shit like that to people. That's not cool, you know. I mean, as much as like the double standard is what it is, it's like 
but you can't just take the 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 shit from the dudes. It's just not right. <laughs> <laughs> the, shit's from the, the shit's from the dudes. Uh, <laughs> so Lil Nas X, I haven't heard of this guy until recently. Um, he he made headlines because he released a song that was charting on Billboard for country. And then country music stepped in and said, nah, this ain't country so nah, music. Player. And they, they stripped it from, from Billboard. Um, this, does Lil Nas X have another song prior to this one? Like, no, I've never this heard was of his he very just put first this out. one. Yeah. Was this like, was he being serious when he put this out or was he bullshitting and it just happened to take off? I think he was semi-serious and uh, put it out and then people bid on it, loved it. And uh, yeah, I think that was it really. So he's going to play a, a snippet of this song. And y'all judge if y'all think this is country and should be on the charts. Yeah, let's see. Here we go. I got the horses in the back, horse stock is attached. Head is mad at black, got the boosters black to match. Riding on a horse, horse. you can whip your Porsche. Porsche. I've been in the valley, you ain't been up off that porch now. Nah, can't nobody tell me nothing. You can't tell me nothing. My bladder, she did on my baby. You can't even ask her. My life is a movie. This last little part in this verse is hilarious. Cowboy hat from Gucci, Wrangler on my booty. Can't nobody tell me nothing. All right, so my main thing is all right, that's one that's Lil Nas X. Name of that song is Old Town Road. So, uh, I can see how it took I'm off. I'm gonna play, especially in the country world. I'm gonna play one other song real quick that we're gonna compare it to. It's called Meant to Be by BB Rex and Florida Georgia Line. Now, this song was remains on the country charts and it fucking destroyed Baby, everything. Back and relax. Kick your pretty feet up on my dash. No need to go nowhere fast. Let's enjoy right here. So, two dope songs. Two dope ass songs. I like both I, I like them. Songs. Um, the Lil Nas X. I, I don't listen to a lot of country music other than Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> I used to um, over and over again. Um, the Lil Nas X song, I do think it was pretty catchy and pretty good. Um, although, I will say I have to agree with Country Billboard. That's, that's, that's not a country song. I, I agree with taking that shit off. <laughs> I, and... Here's the, here's the thing. If you look at other genres, they have subcategories. Classic rock, heavy metal, punk rock. You have the, the different type of pop. Hip, hip-hop, you have rap, R&B, you have soul R&B, Afrocentric, you have different levels. Gangsta rap, all that stuff. Country just have one straightforward. So I think this song could spark the conversation of a subcategory of country. Uh, maybe pop country maybe hip-hop country uh something like that but as is i don't think that belongs on the country charts um even that the second song you compared it to that is just a bass drum like that's a drum set and them hitting the bass the other one is like super bass 808s like that that's that's the, that's a huge difference too trap but, country bro. yeah tra- trap country that's a good that's a good name for it but i as just regular country no i don't think that belongs with like blake shelton i 
Okay, <laughs> I, I hate to make this a racial thing. It, yes, racism <laughs> definitely is a part of it for I, sure. I think they complain because it, it immediately shot to number one on the uh, Billboard, right? Yeah, and it yeah. was going to destroy so, every record ever ever out there. So because it had because he was black and it had 808s, it's like, nah, we're gonna get this shit the fuck up out of here. And, and it's just like, like racial as far as like if it was a white person they would have let it stay yeah. even though they probably would agree it wasn't country or right. oh, Florida let it Georgia stay. line would have dropped yeah. that because that, they're an established group it would have yeah. took that, off that's how I feel about yeah. it and, and, and for me like, when hip hop influence touch any uh, genre of music it just sounds so much you better know, right? yeah. but it, it that's what's going to happen yeah. to where every fucking genre of music is going to have a, a hip hop feel to it yeah. um, he said hip hip hop <laughs> Now, but, would you say it's but, country, though, as is? I mean, it, it's definitely country. I, I feel it should be, I could see it being on the country charts as well as hip-hop charts. Yeah. Like, I could see to where it kind of crossed over in, bo- on, on, in both lanes. The problem that I have with it is, like, we could get someone like Sam. Cook? It, Sam, <laughs> no. Sam Smith? Sam Smith, uh, Adele, they can top the pop charts, but then they still can come in in, like, the R&B category or urban music category so it's like why can't a black person be in hip hop but still be country if the song has country elements to it so is that on R&B and hip hop for being too inviting and too accepting yeah it is no 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 I'll take that back it's not because I, I think hip hop is I guess we have control billboard well but just in general I think hip hop has always been a, a accepting culture yeah. like just in general since the beginning of time it, it's been a culture to where you could come and and, and I guess Speak your mind and talk about the culture and environment that you came from. Hell, even the, like the Lulz right now, their music is about all the unacceptance right. they experienced yeah. growing up. Yeah, so and so so that's what hip hop has always been. I, I think the problem is why aren't all the other genres of music accepting? Yeah, and that, such is mm. life, right? Such as yeah. such, yeah. such is the life. We we want the acceptance from everybody. Uh, moving on though. Moving on. LeBron made a promise. What do you promise? LeBron made it. Let me see if I can pull up his IG. But LeBron has been shut down for the remaining uh, six games of the of the season, and I don't have a problem with that. I mean, it was it was time. You know, it, it, half the Lakers injured anyway. Elbows but LeBron said, yeah. LeBron said, "Believe me!" Exclamation point. Believe me. Promise. Hashtag Laker Nation. The spell won't last much longer. Exclamation point! I swear, the marathon continues. Damn, like that—that that was a tweet that even had Nipsey <laughs> involvement in it way before the passing of, of Nipsey. But the marathon continues. Does that, as a Laker fan, do you feel that year two of LeBron in an in LA jersey is going to be way more better than year one? Are you encouraged by this? Uh, yes, like because it's. Based off those tweets, I I think LeBron is getting back to just like let me focus on basketball, let me focus on like taking the, like the kids. He call them kids, so let me focus on taking the kids under my wing, and we're gonna come back next year ready to roll. Obviously, he's gonna recruit, you know, try to get another star. Hopefully, we bring in a coach, a coach in that he's gonna respect. Um, I don't like the idea of them bringing in these player coaches. I, I don't want a player coach. Put some respect on Juwan's like name. Yeah, like, I, don't I don't want a player coach at all. But I, yeah, I, I got that want, with Luke Walton. It yeah, ain't working. Yeah, I want somebody that he's going to respect. You know what I mean? So, I, like, I think year two is definitely going to be a lot better. I think he has a chip on his shoulder because everyone is right, writing him off. He's no longer the best player in the league. Yada yada yada. So I definitely think he's going to have that chip, and hopefully it rubs off on whoever's you know still on the team next year. And I think they're going to be ready to make noise. See, I'm looking at it encouraged a different way by LeBron, number one. But I think if the Lakers find it in their heart to keep Lonzo, they're going to get a monster Lonzo next year. And that's another thing. Yeah. I just like to – He un triple B. Yeah, I like the energy that's coming out from the Laker like, players. Like, yeah. I'm still questioning the front office magic and Rob Palenka still got to get their shit together. Uh, we got to find a coach, obviously, but – like just like Lonzo stepping out and finally trying to be his own man, kind of like like putting his dead in his place. Like you're you're dead. Let me manage my career. Let me get my own people. I feel like it was a bigger blow up than 
me maybe the media is covering maybe because that is his dad but right. to remove not move remove big baller brand from the page but to remove your father and yeah. then your brothers remove your father too yeah. from their pages it's like dad don't ain't, ain't innocent in this no it's not and, and i don't think the media is covering it i don't think maybe it's not their job because i, I think that maybe have been like a family yeah. let's keep it you know behind closed doors type of situation uh but but i respect the fact because i mean he's what 21 22 now it's time for you to be your own man uh and it's like you respect him moving like, it, removing like, his dad from instagram no yeah well not that <laughs> yeah. i mean but if that's the message he wanted to send so what i respect the fact that he's he's stepping out and, and trying to take you know fly on his own like and i'm pretty sure he still loves his dad i'm pretty sure they still got a great relationship it's but it's just like pops i want you to be dead let me be my own man let me handle my career i, I don't see anything wrong with that and i think He's gonna come out, come back, and be the best version of himself. Like obviously, he's never gonna be one of these scoring point guards, one of these top point guards. But he still can be, I guess, the point guard of the Lakers, like that quarterback on the floor type of player. The LeBron surrounded by playmakers clearly didn't work. Well, they were four seed, but it, it wasn't gonna be a championship team. Just gonna be a yeah, playoff yeah, yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. So I saw that somebody was like, LeBron gonna turn the Lakers into Cleveland. To where it's gonna be LeBron no. and a bunch of shooters. You think ple- you think Lakers need to set themselves up for post LeBron? I mean, if they're smart, that's what they that's the route they would take to where it's like even though So is it more like should should they be focused on getting LeBron a ring or it being a suitable uh organization after he's gone? I think you're you focus on trying to win a ring, ring bro. with LeBron while this window is still open without if if possible, without giving up all your young access. Assets because you don't want to give away everyone for a three year run. Then we right back to been at the bottom of the league for the next five years after LeBron retired. So if you can build this team while trying to keep Kuzma Alonso, if possible, I think that's the route you take. See, question though, I don't know if it's because I've been so consumed with um, the Nipsey situation that either I just haven't been tuned into sports or. The Barsh Madness has just lost his buzz since there's no Duke, UK, uh, or or UNC. And it seemed like it's, it's the NBA playoffs is about to start. So, obviously, the NBA is kind of dying down right now. But ha- has it been – oh, like, has there been a lot of hype surrounding I, I agree sports? With that. I, I agree with that. Like, the March Madness has been great up until this point. Like Not this, the fact that the game's like, been whack, but, like, the like, buzz. Like, yeah, up until this point, it's been great, but the buzz – because there is no Zion, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. the North Carolinas, the UCLA's, like all the powerhouse schools, blue blood schools are not in the Final Four. I think it is taking away from a little bus of the Final Four. And right now the NBA is just like, yeah, we wait for playoffs to start. Give us another week on the NBA. So, yeah, right now, it, like, the buzz had kind of died down. And then – Shit feel like New Jersey Nets versus the <laughs> Spurs in the finals, bro, for real life. <laughs> like, who won? Okay, right. just, just – uh, it's, I'll read it in the paper. Like, I'll give a fuck. Right. When, it, when is the final game of March Madness? Uh, s- uh, final Four Saturday championship is Monday. Okay. So who, who's the Final Four? I, my team, once they uh, lost in the lead eight, I ain't even watched. Michigan State versus Texas Tech on one side. The other side is Virginia versus Auburn. So you didn't get a perfect bracket then. Hell no. <laughs> Shit did. Speaking of Zion, uh Gilbert Arenas offered some advice, or not advice, but his take on Zion Williamson and just how his game is gonna translate into the NBA. Mm. And uh I wish I could find a clip, but uh, essentially Gilbert was just saying, calling out some of the flaws that he see within Zion's game, which is he's dominating in college, but is he a dominant player? He's he's not a he's not hasn't been posting up. He's just been beating people off the dribble. He's six six, but has Shaq's rookie weight to where he's not. He doesn't really have a true position in the league. At six six, you'll be guarding the, the Russell Westbrooks of the league, the the Paul Georges, and not down low. So, what do you think of Gilbert's assessment of Zion Williamson? As I try to find this clip, uh, you got it. Okay, yeah, yeah. my guy. Let's hear it. We'll try to. I think uh, Nate got Boost Mobile. <laughs> okay, hang on. There we go. Pull it up. There you go. Log in. 27 and 14. Right. But how did you actually get that? Right. Did you post somebody up in college? Did you Did you sit here with the left hand, grab it, turn and face, get him in and dunk it? Right. No? You got 12 points on fast break. 
You got 12 points sitting here, you know, waiting for another player to do something, and you come in with the tomahawk. Right. Right. So when I say you dominated, your stats are dominated. Right. But are you at 6'6", six, six, power forward, right. which is you're undersized, you're 285. Right. Sounds amazing. Right. Sounds, it sounds great. But in reality, if I say, well, he's Westbrook's heights, but he shacks a rookie weight, everybody's like, ooh, that's not, ooh. Because yeah. <laughs> that's what he is. 6'6", yeah. six, six, 285, you, you, you haven't posted up at all. You didn't post up in high school. It's the lazy post up. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you, you know, you're sitting here. Because before, all you do is just have to just jump high, yeah. drop step, and try to dunk on anybody. Yeah. So you've never learned the skill of backing down, two dribbles, none of it. When you go to the next level, what position do you play? So then you have this great phenom player that has no true skill. And I'm, I'll stop right there. I think Gil was a little off base by when he said he has no true skill. That was a, that was a stretch. But I think he has some good valid points. Maybe not to where Zion can't do these things, but he just hasn't had to show it in high school or show it at Duke because he's been producing in different ways. Now, does this mean that his development is going to stop once he gets in the NBA? And that was my whole thing. I didn't take it as hate because he's just saying tangibles that nobody's ever said about Zion. Everybody's all Team Zion. So the first person that has some tangibles for him, people don't like it. But I, I looked. if I'm Zion, I'm looking at that like, yo, there's one person I don't think I can do this. I'm not going to show him. Or maybe he's right. I haven't, had to, uh, <laughs> I haven't, I haven't developed these skills, so I'm going to go ahead and develop it. You know what I'm saying? Like – Everything ain't, ain't ain't hate nationwide. Nah, I I I took it completely as hate, out the out the simple sense. He said he's gonna be the number one player, but he doesn't have any real skill. Lies. That that's hate to me. Secondly, like your manager, supervisor, you do reviews. Like if you're giving constructive criticism to someone, I'm pretty sure you preference that criticism with like some positivity, or you end it with some type of positivity. I, I didn't hear nothing positive about Zion. So that's why I took it as hate. Like, but he ain't managing Zion, though. <laughs> like, he, But he's giving an evaluation. Like, if, like, like, if, okay, anyone, any analyst, like, man, Zion's the best player. He's the talented, most talented, or he's the top player in college basketball. I mean, he's no clear, same analyst say he's uh, clear Dwayne Haskins is more of a runner, though. <laughs> <laughs> Shouts out to Steve. <laughs> but, like, they're they going to give you some positivity. But, no, yeah, no, he's not a finished product. So, it was definitely some truth. Like, he does need to improve his post game. He does need to improve his shot. But, but, he's, then, but he's quicker than every power forward in the league. And but and then he's talking about he's undersized. Okay, name a name a power forward in the league that primarily pay, plays out the post. That's but, tall as fuck. Here's the thing, though. You When you think of Zion and his ceiling – you don't want him to be Draymond. You don't want Zion to be on the court he's being a Draymond. Draymond. He's I mean, right. Than Draymond's junior in high school. Exactly, but an uh, undersized power forward like Draymond is, that's what. That's the only people that's in the league playing like that. But I don't question, have an example of an undersized Zion dominating. No, 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 no. Just, no, just in general, name a power forward in the league that primarily play out the post. Since he can't post and he's undersized, name a power forward in the league. I can't think of one that's doing that, but the I Marcus took Rogers, I, one. But I took it as him saying he's undersized and going to be a power forward. But a lot of the guards post now, like the the guards will post you up, bro. We watching a game right now. The two power fours on the floor is Gallinari. <laughs> they not been a post. I get it. And, and uh, PJ fucking Tucker. He's not fucking undersized, but bro. The, but the the Brody will post up. Russell will, uh, Westbrook will post up. Yeah, but so, who's going to be guarding him? A fucking guard. Not no, no, Zion. no, 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 no. I don't think a guard is going to be guarding Zion. No, you're talking about, I would say, who's going to be guarding Brody. Okay, gotcha, like, gotcha. Okay. So, basically, what I'm getting to So, is, you're saying if, if a power forward is guarding Zion, he don't need the post, he's going to be quicker than him. Well, no, no, not even that. What I'm getting to is the game isn't played through the post. Like, majority of the power forwards are playing a, along the wing or 16 to 18 feet. Did he out. say post up in the post though? He said post up. Yeah, so that's man, that could be elbow. Po- post up in general. Ain't no power force posting up besides like Lamarcus Aldridge, Kevin Love, uh Anthony Davis a little. But majority of players play face up. They play out at the three point line. That's the way of the game today. So like that's the like what he was saying, it was like Zion was coming into the NBA 10, 15 years ago. 
Look, it's a different game. I think Zion is going to be number one pick. I think Zion is a beast. But if I'm I'm taking uh, Gilbert's comments and I'm thinking about them, and I look at Zion's game, and I said, okay, at six six, he's either got to be quicker than everybody or wait on other people to set him up, just like Gil said. Can Zion in the NBA break you down and get a shot and but pull up? Check. That's what the fucking power forward position is. Anyways, because they're not ball handlers. But I'm saying, are we looking at Zion as, as his ceiling is Blake Griffin? I thought we were looking no. at him to where he's going to be that next level. No, guy. I think I think Blake, I think he's Blake Griffin from day one. Okay, like I, I don't know what his ceiling Blake. is. I don't know what his ceiling is, but I think he's Blake Griffin from day one. No matter of fact, I, I I said his ceiling would be like Charles Barkley. So and Charles Barkley is a Hall of Famer. Uh, he won MVP. He didn't win the championship because he ran into Jordan, but. So I think he's going to be somewhere in that range between Blake Griffin and, and Charles Barkley. I, I just I, I I wasn't feeling his criticism because one Zion isn't a finished product. Like what nineteen year old out of college has you know the jump shot, the post game, the ball handling, the vision. There's not too many players that got all that in one. There's no. So players. how's it hate then if nobody has it? Why because, does it hate to call out that he don't got it? Because he said he's going to be number one player with no real skill. Now, there that was that was There wrong, wasn't though. any type of positivity. Like, I don't think it was I don't think it was constructive, in my opinion. That's why I'm sending this hate. Okay. I don't think it was constructive. I thought it was just all straight negative. So, that's why I'm calling it hate. Secondly, I think what he was describing is, like, the game of five or ten years ago. Power fours don't really play through the post anyways nowadays. So, like – him needing a super polished post game at 19, having the footwork at 19 isn't necessarily the game. Plus, a lot of players don't play that way. And not and, and like to go back to the game against USC, I seen him make like great post moves like back to back plays. One, one time he came down the left block, caught the ball, dribbled, stepped for uh stepped to this inside shoulder, pumped him, defender jump, he stepped through for a layup. Next time he caught the uh post uh ball in the post on the other block. He felt the guy on the inside shoulder, spun baseline, banged out two hands. So those are post moves. Like, <laughs> no, he didn't back the back the defender down four or five times like Shaq, but those were post moves. So like he has the skills, and he's gonna get better. He's nineteen. He's gonna develop. So and it looks like he actually will commit to and getting he's hungry. a de- get a de- uh, jump shot. Yeah, he's hungry, yeah, yeah. bro. Like. Now, and like I said, he does need to improve his game. Like, if he wants to be one of the elite, if he wants to be an MVP caliber player, you would like to see him continue to improve his jump shot, continue to improve his post game and his ball handling. You see, he's about to start the uh, bidding war for the shoes, right? Oh, yeah, no. He's he's going to get $100 million. At least. $100 hey, million so. dollar check. You, you think so? Uh, at least. If, if LeBron got 90 in 2003, you don't think that number going to be higher now? That's why I said $100 million at least. <laughs> at least. I, okay, okay. At minimum. Okay, I got you. Got you. I feel like it's going to be – Crazy, but I don't see nobody wanting to wear Air Zions though. It ain't about that. It's just, <laughs> I, honestly, it's gonna be depending on how the shoe look. Yeah, as long yeah, as the shoe yeah, look yeah. good, and then he's dunking on everybody like he did at Duke. People buy. They gonna bring back the Boings, bro. Bring back the shocks just for him. Well, the shit they already bought them back for Vince because this is last year. <laughs> oh, did they? Yeah. You got a pair? Nah. You a hater? <laughs> you a hater? Um, but that's all, man. I don't really got nothing else to, to touch on, man. Uh, again, thank y'all for for. Checking back in with you with your boys, episode one on one. Um, I say one more time, rest in peace to Nipsey. I'm Johnny Will, I'm signing out. Yo, I ain't well, oh, I do got a little something to say. The shot come back on this week. That's my shit. Check it out. Uh but yeah, this is the nationwide Nate signing out. It's Cartier King, man. We definitely appreciate y'all tuning in and uh Nip, this one's for you, dog. Twenty on twenty on twenty. I see out. I'm prolific, so gifted. I'm the type that's gon' go get it, no kidding. Breaking down a switch in front of your building. Sitting on the steps, feeling no feelings. Last night it was a cold killer. You gotta keep the devil in this hole, nigga. But you know how it go, nigga. I'm front line every time it's on, nigga. 100 pro flow, running shoot pro. 458 drop, playing bulletproof so. Every few shows, I just buy some new gold. Circle got smaller, everybody can't go. Downtown Diamond District, Jewelers like